Hello everyone, today I want to share my Alekino builds and teams with you on the short guide. As always, I start with a build, then go over teams and at the end show some Abyss gameplay. Her build is fairly standard, she wants the usual crit crit damage, in her case pyro damage bonus and attack. As for elemental mastery it's always nice to scale her vaporize or melt damage with around 2 to 300 I'd say. As for energy recharge I don't think her bear skill is super important so you can pretty much ignore it. As for talents, the normal attacks are by far the most important thing here. Level them up first, all the way, and then the burst skill, it also hits quite hard and you scale your healing a little bit, and then the elemental skill isn't super impressive. Yes, it does some damage, so I would still level it up, but it is the lowest priority. The constellations, nothing too special, mostly just damage increases, nothing super exciting. Which is a good thing, because at C0 this character is super unique already, so leaving all the boring stuff for the constellations is a good thing, so you don't feel pressure to get them. Constellation 1 is just extra damage on the normal attacks, Constellation 2 whenever you apply blood dabs they are instantly upgraded, you no longer have to wait for that, and then you also trigger some extra damage. Noticeable is that Constellation 3 has extra levels for the normal attacks, which is obviously great for her. And then it kind of shifts to the burst skill. Constellation 4 is just extra cooldown reduction on the burst skill and extra energy refund. And then obviously Constellation 6, a lot of extra stats for normal attacks and the burst skill. As for weapons, there are actually very good free to play options. First of all, Dragon's Bane is a very common one. If you play Vaporize teams, this is definitely a reasonable choice. Then if you happen to have the event weapon Missive Windspear, it is even slightly better, just as a stat stick. And one weapon I always forget to lock, which I obviously don't have right now, is a 3 star weapon called White Tassel. It looks like this but in white and you get it from opening chests, so you get it all the time. Don't do what I did and just feed them into other weapons for experience. At least save one and refine it up to level 5. It's really good on this character, better than those 4 star options and even better than for example the Skyward Spine. And I don't really um, talk about 5 star weapons too much but obviously Staff of Homer and Primordial Jade Wing Spear are great for her both. They are on par with her own weapon I would even say. As for artifacts, we already covered substats earlier. As for main stats, in this slot it's elemental mastery or attack percentage. I think both are perfectly fine, especially considering that elemental mastery is a little bit hard to come by. Next, in this slot, pyro damage bonus, and in the last one, crit rate or crit damage, whichever one balances your stats better. As for the set, Gladiator is really good to start us off, and then eventually you definitely want the new set, the um, Fragment of Harmonic Whimsy for the Bond of Life damage bonus, which stacks up to, I think, nearly 60%, which is pretty, pretty nice. And then, one little thing to mention is, she gets a lot of bonus damage. So if you don't play Bennett, if you play Bennett, always pyro damage bonus. If you don't play him, attack percentage can suddenly get very viable because you will likely lack attack and already have like the pyro damage bonus from her passive skill, the gladiator set, something like the white tassel or the dragon's bane weapon, and then something like Zhongli on Akiak Petra, Kazua's damage bonus or Yelan's damage bonus. And without the cup, you're already like past 150% damage bonus, so attack percentage in this case can be very viable. As for team composition, super straightforward again, Alekino is a pyro main DPS, so she is on field dealing pyro damage, so we are looking for off field sub DPS characters and utility characters. First, to finish the elemental reaction, we have something like Yelan or Xingxiu for example to go for Vaporize, and then in the next slot we go for a utility character like for example Kazuo or Sucrose for the Viridescent set and their extra buffs, and then in the last slot we can go for something like Pyro Resonance with Again, something like Bennett, it is the highest damage option, but it's also risky because you don't have anything to sustain Alekino aside from her burst skill. If you want to play a little bit safer, you have something like Zhongli for obviously her shield to keep Alekino alive, but also the Resistance Shred and the Akiaik Petra set, or the Malilith set if you go for the attack buff instead. 
Aside from Bennett and Zhang Li, there are also other shield characters to sustain your teams, which only get super beneficial though once you get a certain number of constellations. For example, constellation 6 Toma also increases normal attack and charge attack damage, constellation 6 Diona increases elemental mastery, and constellation 4 Layla increases normal attack and charge attack damage again. Aside from Vaporize, you also have the option to go for a Melt team, and I think the only Cryo sub DPS character hitting hard enough to make this worth it is Rosaria. She also provides some extra utility with her crit rate buff, and she has great synergy with Bennett. Obviously, Rosaria's burst go snapshot, so she can benefit from Bennett's attack buff even if she is not on field. Then we can again go for our Nemo sub DPS uh, utility pick with Lakazu like, or Sucrose. Then I think even playing Zhongli and Bennett together, I feel a little bit awkward doing that, but it's definitely not a bad choice. But if you want to get real fancy, you can even pick something like Nahida. This will result in a burning team with Alekino and Nahida, and then Rosaria can melt off it. But it is a little bit awkward. I feel like for this team to really take off, we are still lacking the perfect like Dendro sub DPS, because in this case, obviously Alekino will benefit from um, Nahida's Elemental Mastery buff, since she is the character on field, but it should be Rosaria in this case, because she is the one melting, so Nahida is a little bit awkward here, to be fair. And the last thing I want to mention is a reverse melt team, again with Rosaria and a second cryo character like Layla or Diona to sustain your team, but also have enough cryo application to make Alekino trigger the melt. With this, you also have Cryo Resonance, and together with the Rosaria, you get a lot of free crit chance, up to 25%, which is the whole reason I think this might be worth it, because you might actually make Arlequinus build very crit damage heavy, so you get a lot of extra stats from there. As for gameplay, Alekino is very unique with her bond of life mechanic, but she's also quite simple. One thing you need to know is she can only be healed by her elemental burst skill while in combat. And yes, you can do the whole elemental skill into burst skill into elemental skill again combo, but you don't need it to keep the rotation going. So if you want to simplify it, you can just leave her burst skill aside and only use it when you need healing. Other than that, you also want to manage your blood depth, so you press your elemental skill at the start of a fight, then you rotate through your other team members, and while you do that, they will be upgraded to blood depth use, and then when you get back to Arlequino, you can press your charge attack to absorb them and gain bond of life to activate the pyro infusion. And then, once you attack with your normal attacks, you consume your bond of life, and in turn, it will also reduce the cooldown of your elemental skill again, so by the end of it you can press your elemental skill again and rotate through your entire team to rinse and repeat. It's very simple, again you don't need to reset your cooldown with your burst skill to keep your rotation going. So to quickly visualize that, I initiate again with her elemental skill to apply the blood depths then rotate through the rest of your team and get the burning going, this is the melt burn team showcase. And now charge attack to absorb the blood depths to acquire the pyro infusion. And now once I lose it, I have it again, so I press the elemental skill again, rotate through the rest of my team, and once I get back, I could have pressed the charge attack to absorb them again and keep normal attacking. But now I'm just gonna leave you with this Abyss gameplay, but don't worry, Father's still here. <laughs> and I come back at the end. One with nature. Clouds high. The birds call into the wind. Quietly now. Game's up. Fun. One with nature. Shot as one with wind and cloud. Enjoy. The wind knows me. Here comes the catch. Stabilize. I will have order. <laughs> Witness my rise. Laid bare. Solidify. 
Pop. Alright, we made it to the end. I hope this gave you some inspiration for your own builds. And next week, Abyss Reset, so sometime after that, I will probably upload a full Abyss run with Alakino. So stay tuned for that. Until then, have fun and bye bye.